As a small child, I used to be afraid of the dark. I couldn't stand it, the fear of the unknown. Dark, amorphous shapes seemed to envelop the spaces surrounding my bed. I'd cover my head with my bed sheets, leaving only a small hole just big enough for breathing, as if to cut myself off from the outside world, a false and flimsy barricade from the creatures which haunted my dreams. For years I had trouble sleeping and would wake up crying to crawl in bed with my parents, hoping that somehow the nightmares could not reach me there, as if my dreams were something other than myself. At first I was afraid of vampires, zombies, werewolves, ghosts, and other creatures of that nature. Bad things happened because of scary, unexplainable things. The things that covered my skin in goosebumps and caused the hair on the back of my neck to stand up. I was convinced that when my family members were angry and violent, that they were somehow not themselves, and that some sort of scary monster lived inside each of them. Monsters who could be unsuspectedly provoked and attack at any given moment. Why do bad things happen? Are people naturally good? What does it even mean to be good? I remember my mother saying to me once that there is no such thing as good and evil, or rather no one nor any given thing can strictly be one or the other. This sat heavy in my childhood brain and lingered there for years. This murky, moral gray area was perhaps more frightening than the monsters of my nightmares. As I grew older, I began to realize that the sinister, otherworldly creatures did not truly exist, and that scary things were more often a result of other people, and sometimes, maybe even myself. The monsters weren't to blame. We were. Every now and again, I find myself attracted to romantic monster novels. I came across a quote once which particularly stood out to me. We all wind up drawn to what we're afraid of, drawn to try to find a way to make ourselves safe from the thing, by crawling inside of it, by loving it, by becoming it. We like to keep scary things at arm's reach, to classify them as something other than ourselves, Facing the parts of oneself that we find unappealing or frightening can be difficult, so we often make attempts to project these monstrous traits onto other people's behavior. It's easier to look at a scary thing when we interpret it as something that does not exist inside ourselves. We get so caught up in the tensions that we forget that maybe the thing we are most afraid of is ourselves. And maybe it isn't about trying to slay the monster after all but rather learning to live with it. Because sometimes, when we fight our monsters, we run the risk of becoming them entirely.